Hey everyone, it's John Pollock alongside Cody Saftik and we're chatting about the UFC's always entertaining light heavyweight division and they got some good news this week, Cody, because Dana White, speaking to our friends at TSN, confirmed that Misha Serkinov, the guy who Dana had said had flaked out on a new contract, well, he has unflaked himself and signed a new contract and he is back in the fold at 205. I would say of all the light heavyweights with Nikita Krylov, even Ryan Bader, to me, Misha Serkinov was the key guy to keep out of those three. I think for long-term uh, prosperity in that division, this is someone that could really, he has a high ceiling at light heavyweight. Yeah, I couldn't agree more. And generally when Dana White gives you that seal of this guy's done in the UFC, generally means he will fight in the UFC. In the George St. Pierre will future. never fight again. Misha <laughs> right. Serkinov, I don't want to be in business with this guy. If he's not in business with you, there's a good chance you're going to reset Always him. Always a good sign. Future. Yeah, exactly. And I, I, I couldn't agree more in the sense that he's got some, some use to him. He's a fresh face in the UFC. He's 4-0 in the UFC. He's finished all four of those fights. He's entertaining. And when you get an endorsement from a guy like Anthony Johnson that openly says, like, this guy's a guy that you got to watch out for, it's good for your brand. It's good for your reputation. He's obviously a high level BJJ black belt that's something that he brings to the table that some of the other guys at the light heavyweight division doesn't and when you look at the top guys ranked at 205 currently they need that fresh blood they need those new contenders if you're gonna let a guy like Ryan Bader go it's understandable you know he's, he's an older fighter in the division maybe you can let someone like that go but you cannot let those younger fighters go a guy like Amisha Churkinov with that high upside that could sell so many fights for you in the future and, and that's exactly it John just look at these rankings Misha jumps in immediately and makes an impact, and for that reason, they, they should be very glad that they resigned. Yeah, these these are the, the UFC's current top 10, and Misha Serkinov was taken out after this contract dispute for whatever reason. He'll be inserted back there, where I, I would imagine uh, Volkan Uzdemir should take a photo of this uh, top 10, at least at present. Maybe in the future he will Feels earn kids. a spot there. I wouldn't say right now he deserves to be in the top 10. But Misha Serkinov, as well, we look at everyone here on this list, Ryan Bader, we don't know what his status is at this moment. Other guys booked for fights. There isn't that automatic option for Misha at the moment until some of these fights play themselves to play themselves out. Ilya Latifi is the one guy that seems free at this moment and doesn't seem like a fight that makes a lot of sense for certain of. No, and he's in a unique position here too that when you look at those rankings, you see a guy like Alvin St. Preux ranked in that ninth spot. Volkan makes his UFC debut against OSP, gets the win immediately, one fight into his UFC tenure, a fight he took on short notice, by the way, and he's ranked in the top 10. OSP is a former title challenger, and that just goes to show the depth of light heavyweight. His, his win was good enough to get him it propelled into the top 10, but not above the guy he beat. <laughs> that is shocking to me. We did not make those rankings. Those are the UFC's official rankings, so I guess a, a median of everyone who actually votes for it. But but you just go to, you, you get a, a feeling of the depth is perhaps not there. So if you're Misha Cherkinov now four fights into your UFC career, you might only need that one big win, a win over a little nog, a win over a Shogun Hua, someone of that name, and you could propel yourself into the higher echelon. We already got Anthony Johnson talking about you. John Jones's future, as we always say every time we talk about John Jones, uncertain for the time being, and they're lacking those 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 name title challenges to come in. So I think this is huge for him. I hope he got what he deserved, although I'm really not sure what the logistics of the contract is. But he's an exciting fighter, and the UFC has to keep guys like that. You don't want a guy like this to walk and then have fans say, well, imagine what he could have done in the UFC. Just, just see it. And for that reason, I'm certainly happy. Yeah, and suddenly you have Misha Serkinov back there, and not to compare him to the same notoriety that a George St. Pierre has, but I think a good week for the UFC reestablishing itself in Canada with, with some key fighters. I mean, with the loss of Roy McDonald, and we, we've seen, like, certainly there's been, been a drastic hit to this market for the UFC, and coming off that Halifax show, I think you have some key, key fighters in place now where at least you have some, some interest on the Canadian level, and George St. Pierre, I think, will inject a lot of that later this year. He injects certainly a lot of that, and we even saw, as you mentioned with the Halifax card, having an Eamon Zahabi, and then having George just come out and endorse this guy. A Gavin Tucker. Internationally, fans are raving about this guy, and, you know, just a small-town prospect from Newfoundland all of a sudden gets that platform, all of a sudden has that ability to make a name for himself, and fans will rally behind them, but what you can't do is just let them go 4-0 in your promotion, four good performances, finishing four opponents, and then let them go. I mean, she's not someone just signed with him and then was asking for too much money. He's someone that's gone in there, earned it every single time. And he's looked fantastic every single time. And as I talk about it, age is a big thing. When you look at 205 and heavyweight, those are the older divisions in the UFC where you can kind of get away with being an elder fighter. When you've got that young guy on his way up, I mean, you got to wrap him up. you got to keep him on lockdown. And, and I think they've done the right, uh, the right move here with Misha Cherkinov. Quality light heavyweights we've established are in short supply. And that's what makes the Ryan Bader free agent interesting because Dana White had publicly divorced themselves from Ryan Bader and gave the insinuation that they were going to let him walk. But that hasn't exactly been the case because Bellator is still in the midst of these 
negotiations with Bader, who it's, it's a question if the UFC is, is going to match or not, if they're going to make a play to try and keep Ryan Bader. And he's an interesting uh, piece on the table now for both of these promotions as they're trying to stock up their light heavyweight divisions. You get a read on where Ryan Bader ends up here. Do you see the UFC having a, a change in faith when it comes to retaining some of these light heavyweights and Ryan Bader being one of them? I'm not so sure about Ryan Bader only because he's someone that probably will command a decent payday and at 33 years old I don't know that it's worth it for the UFC. If you could only keep one of these two fighters, Misha Cherkinov with the upside, Ryan Bader someone who's already been to that highest level, you just retain Misha Cherkinov, maybe you don't need Ryan Bader. If you're Bellator, you're willing to go get those big name guys. You'll sign Phil Davis, you'll sign the Chael Sonnen. But if you're the UFC, what's the issue with a Phil Davis and a Ryan Bader? They're ultra tough. The fans have already proven to not be massive fans of this. They're not going to sell you pay-per-view. And they'll go out there and they'll beat your young prospects on the way up. So if you're trying to build that division, Phil Davis is going to kill that division. And that's just because he's ultra talented. Nothing get his style. I'm a huge fan of Mr. Wonderful. But he is going to kill those guys on the way up and all of a sudden you just don't have that intrigue. So let a Ryan Bader go. Let a Phil Davis go. And then build from the ground up. Build from the guys like, I, I know they let Krylov go as well apparently, but, yep. but get those young fighters. Build them up. Even guys like Yusupov over in M1 Global bring in some of these guys in and, and they're terrific fighters they just you got to build them up if if i can have one dream it's nikita krylov going to bellator and al capone getting a spike inspired entrance Could and you, you know he it? would too you know he would absolutely if they're going to go full out terminator for cyborg and, and uh, even chai congos by the way go watch that opening it's like if he was walking down that ramp after seeing that intro, you'd be like, I'm out of here, man. I'm just going to slip out the back door of this cage. Al Capone against Darth Bader. I mean, it just, <laughs> it the endless himself. possibilities for Bellator. That's what they want, just entrances. All right, the Misha Serkinov saga is over. He is back in the UFC, and we will wait to see when he returns to the cage and who he's going to fight at 205 pounds.